So thank you again for joining us for the question and answer session for the Specialized OER project. My name is Laura Luopa. I am a librarian here with the Open Library at eCampus Ontario. I'm also joined by my colleague and partner on the project, Sarah Sukanen, who is a coordinator with the Open Library at eCampus, and will be helping to moderate the chat and answer any questions. We'd like to take a moment before we start the session to share a land acknowledgement. The offices of eCampus Ontario, located in downtown Toronto, are within the traditional territories of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishibe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. We acknowledge and thank the diverse Indigenous people whose footsteps have, currently do, and will continue to mark this territory. And we also ask that you consider the caretakers of the lands and waters on which you are situated. I am a settler here on this land covered by Treaty 13 and the Williams Treaty, where I have the honour to work and play. Feel free to share your own land acknowledgement in the chat. I also wanted to say that I am joining us from Sudbury, which is located on the traditional lands of the Atikamishang and the Anishinaabe, and also in the traditional lands of the Wanapate First Nations. For our agenda today, we will be talking about our programs and services for the Open Library, about the Open Library itself and Open Educational Resources, then focusing on the specialized OER project, we'll be sharing our contact information and having a question and answer portion. For those of you who are not familiar with eCampus Ontario, we're going to go over some of the programs that are provided. eCampus Ontario, we develop platforms, new programs, services, and support systems that address sector-wide challenges. We provide the necessary learner and educator supports to foster rich, humanized, inclusive, and successful educational experiences within the realm of virtual learning. From planning for possible futures to finding strategic partners, developing talent through to launching new programs, eCampus Ontario is a platform to help you navigate digital transformation in education. Beyond the Open Library, we have many amazing programs like our professional matchmaking platform, Ontario Exchange, and our technology, education, seminar and showcase conference, which is coming up in November. You can explore them with the links that are being posted in the chat. Next, we're going to talk about what OERs are. I'm sure many of you know what an OER is, but it never hurts to get a refresher. I've said the word OER more than a dozen times, but I haven't defined it. So OER stands for Open Educational Resources. We usually use David Wiley's definition that says that the term open content and open educational resources describe any copyrightable work that is either in the public domain or licensed in a manner that provides everyone with the free and perpetual permission to engage in the five R activities, retain, revise, remix, reuse, and redistribute. Just to go in a little bit into the five R's, retaining means to make your own and to control a copy of a resource you find in our catalog. Revise, meaning you can edit, adapt, and modify the resource. Remix, you can contribute your ideas with other existing material to create something new. Reuse, you can use an original work, revised or make remixed copy of your resource and make it public, for example, in a presentation. And finally, redistribute, which means you can share copies of your work, whether it is an original work or a remixed resource to others in your community. For more information on the 5R activities and a general summary, about OER licensing and the Open Library, you can watch the webinar OER and You. We'll be posting the link in the chat. What an OER can look like is vast. It doesn't have to look like a textbook. 
We have a lot of different OERs in the Open Library catalog. We got a list of files and media types that continue to expand from simulations to assessments to common cartridge courses or podcasts and textbooks or textbooks on how to make podcasts, video recordings, interactive activities, and VR. OER is not just a book. Really, there's so much more to OER than a format. Here, I just wanted to point out the financial benefits of OER. We know that what a burden purchasing textbooks and other learning materials can be to learners and educators, and OER can help tremendously with that. So far, we have helped over students save over $18 million, and this number is based only on reported adoptions, so it is likely much higher than that at the moment. Now for the main event. We're going to talk about the Specialized OER and Ancillary Resources project. Over the summer, the Open Library team conducted an internal environmental scan to determine which subjects in our catalog could use more attention. We evaluated provincial trends such as employment and education trends and compared with other external collections. From this, we concluded that to have a more well-rounded collection, we would benefit to the benefit our stakeholders, we needed to fill in some gaps. And this is where the specialized OER project came from. These are the main targeted areas that were, came out of the environmental scan, business, skilled trades, engineering, and the sciences. These are the types of OERs or ancillary resources that the project will be looking for. Just to give an overview of the project, here are some of the key points. The OERs that are being submitted to be developed must target the areas previously mentioned. They can fall into multiple subject areas. For example, you could have a resource that has a heavy amount of biology and science content and while it is, but may also be cataloged under health sciences. You just need to demonstrate how it can fall into the subject areas. The second point is that funding is available both to individuals and project teams. In both scenarios, you must have a lead who is a member of an Ontario post-secondary institution and a member institution of eCampus Ontario. We are uh, excited to be able to accept um, submissions in English and in French. Also, the type of OER format is up to you, meaning that, as we saw before, the format of the OER could be a press book, a video, a virtual reality experience, an H5 piece, content. It's really up to you. Additionally, you must make the material available through an open license, meaning you can choose one of the licensing options available from the Creative Commons um, link you will find in the chat. And finally, all approved projects will be catalogued by the Open Library staff and made available through the eCampus Ontario Open Library. Here's the timeline of the important dates of which you should be aware. In particular, relating to these dates, I just wanted to highlight that the application deadline is Friday, September 29th, that letters of offer will be issued on October 9th, and that we would need those letters returned by October 12th. And finally, that the project must be completed by February the 16th. In the chat, you'll find a link to the EOI that will be available for you to look over. The main application project is through a form that is attached to the EOI, the expression of interest. The form is available both in English and French. The main areas we will be looking at when the for the applications is a project plan, how the OER will impact students and faculties, and how the budget will be used. Again, to reiterate, the application deadline is September the 29th, and the projects must be completed by February 16th, 2024. During the process of creating the OER, the Open Library is also available to provide support in multiple areas. From licensing to digital tools like Pressbook and H5P, we're here to support people with their projects. A good place to start uh, looking about these topics is the eCampus Ontario YouTube page. 
We've posted a link to recorded workshops and sessions on there, and you may find some of these topics helpful as a resource. Um, we've dropped a link for that in the chat. So I'm going to share our contact information. As I said, we'll have a, a Q&A session, which will begin shortly. But if you have any questions that come up afterwards or as you're connecting with the application form or the EOI more in depth, please feel free to email us at open at ecampusontario.ca with questions and information. You can also message us on the Slack channel. We've been happy to respond to um, some of the inquiries that we've received there already. So you'll find the hashtag available here, hashtag OOLN. Um, and furthermore, if you're interested in having a one-to-one -one meeting with us to discuss some of the nuances of the application or how it might apply to your particular situation or institution, we'd be happy to set up a session and talk to you uh, about some of those nuances. Um, and the final thing that I wanted to share is that we will be having another presentation uh, for the Q&A session. So if you are interested or have another colleague who might be interested in this uh, and want to attend, it will be Thursday, September the 21st, uh, 2023, also over the lunch hour. Um, for that session, interpretation will not be available. Okay, so uh, we've come to the question and answer period. Um, we're going to stop the recording and we would like everyone who has a question to put it in the chat or in the Q&A function. And we will keep a record of the questions asked as a resource for others who weren't able to attend this session. And we can still chat through the mic, but you can also post it in the chat, please. I am just gonna stop sharing my screen now.